Traditionally in Christianity, orthodoxy and heresy have been viewed in relation to the orthodoxy as an authentic lineage of tradition. Other forms of Christianity were viewed as deviant streams of thought and therefore heterodox or heretical. This view was challenged by the publication of Walter Bauer. S. Rechtglobigkeit und Ketzere im Altesten Christentum Orthodoxy and Heresy in Earliest Christianity in 1934. Bauer endeavored to rethink early Christianity historically, independent from the views of the current Church. He stated that the second-century Church was very diverse and included many heretical groups that had an equal claim to apostolic tradition. Bauer interpreted the struggle between the Orthodox and Heterodox to be the mainstream Church of Rome struggling to attain dominance. He presented Edessa and Egypt as places where the Orthodoxy of Rome had little influence during the second century. As he saw it, the theological thought of the Orient in this case the Eastern Roman Empire at the time would later be labeled heresy. The response by modern scholars has been mixed. Some scholars clearly support Bauer's conclusions and others express concerns about his attacking of orthodox sources with inquisitional zeal and exploiting to a nearly absurd extent the argument from silence. However, modern scholars have critiqued and updated Bauer's model. Topic: <laughs> Divisions. Topic: one of the discussions among scholars of early Christianity in the past century is to what extent it is appropriate to speak of orthodoxy and heresy. Higher criticism drastically altered the previous perception that heresy was a very rare exception to the orthodoxy. Bauer was particularly influential in the reconsideration of the historical model. During the 1970s, increasing focus on the effect of social, political and economic circumstances on the formation of early Christianity occurred as Bauer's work found a wider audience. Some scholars argue against the increasing focus on heresies. A movement away from presuming the correctness or dominance of the orthodoxy is seen as understandable, in light of modern approaches. However, they feel that instead of an even and neutral approach to historical analysis that the heterodox sects are given an assumption of superiority over the orthodox or proto-orthodox movement. The current debate is vigorous and broad. While it is difficult to summarize all current views, general statements may be made, remembering that such broad strokes will have exceptions in specific cases. Topic. Adoptionism. An early form of adoptionism, the doctrine that Jesus became the Son of God by adoption, held that Jesus was born human only, and that he became divine, by adoption at his baptism, being chosen because of his sinless devotion to the will of God. The first representatives of this view were the Ebionites. They understood Jesus as Messiah and Son of God in terms of the anointing at his baptism. While the 27 books that became the New Testament canon present Jesus as fully human, adoptionists who may have used non-canonical gospels in addition excluded any miraculous origin for him, seeing him as simply the child of Joseph and Mary, born of them in the normal way. Some scholars view a non-canonical gospel used by the Ebionites, now lost except for fragments quoted in the Panarion of Epiphanius of Salamis as the first to be written, and believe adoptionist theology may predate the New Testament. Others, on the contrary, consider that this work clearly presupposes the canonical Gospels. This Gospel's account of the baptism of Jesus, as quoted by Epiphanius, says that the voice from heaven declared, This day have I begotten thee, a phrase echoing Psalm 2 verse 7, and some see this phrase as supporting the doctrine that it was at his baptism this day that Jesus became God's adopted son. These words from Psalm chapter 2 are also used twice in the canonical epistle to the Hebrews, which on the contrary presents Jesus as the Son, through whom God made the universe. The adoptionist view was later developed by adherents of the form of monarchianism that is represented by Theodotus of Byzantium and Paul of Samosata. Adoptionism clearly conflicted with the claim, as in the Gospel of John, see a for those who rejected the Gospel of John, that Jesus is the eternal word, and it was declared a heresy at the end of the second century. 
It was formally rejected by the First Council of Nicaea 325, which wrote the orthodox doctrine of the consubstantiality of the Father and the Son the co-eminence of the Holy Spirit, and thus the Trinity, did not come about until the Fourth Ecumenical Council of Chalcedon in AD 451 and identified Jesus as eternally begotten. Arianism Arianism, declared by the Council of Nicaea to be heresy, denied the full divinity of Jesus Christ, and is so called after its leader Arius. It has been called the most challenging heresy in the history of the Church. Arius, born probably in Libya between c. 260 and 280, was ordained a priest in Alexandria in 312 to 313. Under Bishop Alexander 313-326, probably in about 319, he came forward as a champion of subordinationist teaching about the person of Christ. Arius appears to have held that the Son of God was not eternal but created by the Father as an instrument for creating the world and therefore not God by nature, different from other creatures in being the one direct creation of God. The controversy quickly spread, with Arius seeking support from other disciples of his teacher Lucian of Antioch, notably Eusebius of Nicomedia, while a local synod under Alexander excommunicated Arius. Because of the agitation aroused by the dispute, Emperor Constantine I sent Hosius of Cordoba to Alexandria to attempt a settlement, but the mission failed. Accordingly, in 325, Constantine convened the First Council of Nicaea, which, largely through the influence of Athanasius of Alexandria, then a deacon, but destined to be Alexander's successor, defined the coternity and coequality of the Father and the Son, using the now famous term, homoousios, to express the oneness of their being, while Arius and some bishops who supported him, including Eusebius, were banished. This council marks the end of the early Christian period and the beginning of the period of the first seven ecumenical councils. Docetism <inaudible> 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 is the belief that Jesus' physical body was an illusion, as was his crucifixion, that is, Jesus only seemed to have a physical body and to physically die, but in reality he was incorporeal, a pure spirit, and hence could not physically die. This belief treats the sentence, The Word was made flesh, John chapter 1 verse 14, as merely figurative. Docetic theology was a prominent feature of dualistic Gnostics. Ebionites. Topic. The Ebionites poor ones, were a sect of Jewish Christians who flourished in the early centuries of Christianity, especially east of the Jordan. They emphasized the binding character of the Mosaic Law and believed Jesus was the human son of Mary. They seem to have been ascetics, and are said to have rejected Paul's epistles and to have used only one gospel. Topic. Gnosticism Topic. Several distinct religious sects, some of them Christian, adhered to an array of beliefs that would later be termed Gnostic. One such sect, that of the Simonians, was said to have been founded by Simon Magus, the Samaritan who is mentioned in the 1st century Acts chapter 8 verses 9 to 24 and who figures prominently in several apocryphal and heresiological accounts by early Christian writers, who regarded him as the source of all heresies. The most successful Christian Gnostic was the priest Valentinus c. 100 c. 160, who founded a Gnostic church in Rome and developed an elaborate cosmology. Gnostics considered the material world to be a prison created by a fallen or evil spirit, the god of the material world, called the Demiurge. Gnostics identified the god of the Hebrew Bible as this Demiurge. Secret knowledge Gnosis was said to liberate one's soul to return to the true god in the realm of light. Valentinus and other Christian Gnostics identified Jesus as the Savior, a spirit sent from the true God into the material world to liberate the souls trapped there. While there appear to be Gnostic elements in some early Christian writing, Irenaeus and others condemned Gnosticism as a heresy, rejecting its dualistic cosmology and vilification of the material world and the creator of that world. Gnostics thought the God of the Old Testament was not the true God. It was considered to be the demiurge and either fallen, as taught by Valentinus c. 100 c. 160 or evil, as taught by the Scythians and Ophites. 
The Gospel of John, according to Stephen L. Harris, both includes Gnostic elements and refutes Gnostic beliefs, presenting a dualistic universe of light and dark, spirit and matter, good and evil, much like the Gnostic accounts, but instead of escaping the material world, Jesus bridges the spiritual and physical worlds. Raymond E. Brown wrote that even though Gnostics interpreted John to support their doctrines, the author didn't intend that. The Johannan epistles were written whether by the author of the gospel or someone in his circle to argue against Gnostic doctrines. The Gospel of Thomas, it is often claimed, has some Gnostic elements but lacks the full Gnostic cosmology. However, even the description of these elements as Gnostic is based mainly upon the presupposition that the text as a whole is a Gnostic gospel, and this idea itself is based upon little other than the fact that it was found along with Gnostic texts at Nag Hammadi. The scene in John in which Doubting Thomas ascertains that the resurrected Jesus is physical refutes the Gnostic idea that Jesus returned to spirit form after death. The written gospel draws on an earlier oral tradition associated with Thomas. Some scholars argue that the Gospel of John was meant to oppose the beliefs of that community. Some believe that Gnostic Christianity was a later development, sometime around the middle or late second century, around the time of Valentinus. Gnosticism was in turn made up of many smaller groups, some of which did not claim any connection to Jesus Christ. In Mandaeist Gnosticism, Mandaeans maintain that Jesus was a Emsiha Kedaba or false messiah, who perverted the teachings entrusted to him by John the Baptist. The word K -A Daba, however, derives from two roots in Mandaic, the first root, meaning to lie, is the one traditionally ascribed to Jesus, the second, meaning to write might provide a second meaning, that of book. Hence some Mandians, motivated perhaps by an ecumenical spirit, maintain that Jesus was not a lying messiah, but a book messiah. The book in question presumably being the Christian Gospels. This however seems to be a folk etymology without support in the Mandian texts. A modern view has argued that Marcionism is mistakenly reckoned among the Gnostics, and really represents a fourth interpretation of the significance of Jesus. Gnostics freely exchanged concepts and texts. It is considered likely that Valentinius was influenced by previous concepts such as Sophia, or by Simon Magus, as much as he influenced others. Marcionism in 144, the church in Rome expelled Marcion of Sinop. He thereupon set up his own separate ecclesiastical organization, later called Marcionism. Like the Gnostics, he promoted dualism. Unlike the Gnostics, however, he founded his beliefs not on secret knowledge gnosis, but on the vast difference between what he saw as the evil deity of the Old Testament and the God of love of the New Testament, on which he expounded in his antithesis. Consequently, Martianists were vehemently anti-Judaism in their beliefs. They rejected the Jewish Christian gospel according to the Hebrews see also Jewish Christian gospels and all the other gospels with the single exception of the Gospel of Marcion, which appears to be a redacted version of the Gospel of Luke. From the perspectives of Tertullian and Epiphanius it appeared that Marcion rejected the non-Lucan gospels, however, in Marcion time, it may be that the only gospel he was familiar with from Pontus was the Gospel of Luke. Although it has been suggested by some that Marcion's gospel predated canonical Luke the dominant scholarly view is that the Marcionite gospel was a redaction of canonical Luke in order to conform to Marcion's anti-Jewish stance, Marcion argued that Christianity should be solely based on Christian love. He went so far as to say that Jesus Mission was to overthrow Demiurge, the fickle, cruel, despotic God of the Old Testament, and replace him with the supreme God of love whom Jesus came to reveal. Marcion was labeled a Gnostic by Irenaeus. Irenaeus labeled Marcion this because of Marcion expressing this core Gnostic belief, that the creator God of the Jews and the Old Testament was the Demiurge. This position, he said, was supported by the ten epistles of Paul that Marcion also accepted. His writing had a profound effect upon the development of Christianity and the canon. Montanism About 156, Montanus launched a ministry of prophecy, criticizing Christians as increasingly worldly and bishops as increasingly autocratic. 
Traveling in his native Anatolia, he and two women preached a return to primitive Christian simplicity, prophecy, celibacy, and asceticism. Tertullian, having grown puritanical with age, embraced Montanism as a more outright application of Christ's teaching. Montanus S. followers revered him as the paraclete that Christ had promised, and he led his sect out into a field to meet the New Jerusalem. His sect spread across the Roman Empire, survived persecution, and relished martyrdom. The Church banned them as a heresy, and in the 6th century Justinian ordered the sect's extinction, the sect's ecstasy, speaking in tongues, and other details are similar to those found in modern Pentecostalism. Topic see also topic topic references topic topic bibliography topic Walter Bauer Orthodoxy and Heresy in Earliest Christianity Philadelphia Fortress 1971 Original German edition 1934 Berard Wayne Daniel When Christians Were Jews That Is Now Cowley Publications 2006 ISBN 1-56101-280-7 Botrite, Mary Taliaferro and Gargola, Daniel J. and Talbert, Richard John Alexander. The Romans, From Village to Empire. Oxford University Press 2004. ISBN 0-19-511875-8. Dauphin, C. De l'Église de la Circoncision à l'Église de la Gentilité sur une nouvelle voie hors de l'impasse. Studium Biblicum Franciscanum. Liber Annuis XLIII 1993. James D. G. Dunn, Unity and Diversity in the New Testament, An Inquiry into the Character of Earliest Christianity, Londra, SCM Press, 1990. Dunn, James D. G. Jews and Christians, The Parting of the Ways, A.D. 70-135. pp. 33-34. W. M. B. Eerdmans Publishing, 1999. ISBN 0-8028-4498-7. Edwards, Mark 2009. Catholicity and Heresy in the Early Church. Ashgate. Ehrman, Bart D. Misquoting Jesus, The Story Behind Who Changed the Bible and Why. HarperCollins 2005. ISBN 0-06-073817-0. Essler, Philip F. The Early Christian World. Routledge 2004. ISBN 0-415-33312-1. Harris, Stephen L. Understanding the Bible. Mayfield, 1985. ISBN 0-87484-696-X. Paul A. Hartig Orthodoxy and Heresy in Early Christian Contexts. Reconsidering the Bauer Thesis, Eugene, WIPF and Stock, 2015. Hunt, Emily Jane. Christianity in the Second Century, The Case of Tatian. Routledge, 2003. ISBN 0-415-30405-9. Keck, Leander E. Paul and His Letters. Fortress Press, 1988. ISBN 0-8006-2340-1. Pelican, Yaroslav Jan. The Christian Tradition, The Emergence of the Catholic Tradition, 100-600. University of Chicago Press, 1975. ISBN 0-226-65371-4. Pritz, Ray A., Nazarene Jewish Christianity from the end of the New Testament period until its disappearance in the 4th century. Magnus Press, E.J. Brill, Jerusalem, Leiden, 1988. Richardson, Cyril Charles. Early Christian Fathers. Westminster John Knox Press, 1953. ISBN 0-664-22747-3. Stark, Rodney, The Rise of Christianity. Harper Collins PBK. Ed. Edition 1997. ISBN 0-06-067701-5 5 Stambaugh, John E. and Balch, David L. The New Testament in its Social Environment. John Knox Press, 1986. ISBN 0-664-25012-2. Tabor, James D. Ancient Judaism, Nazarenes and Ebionites, The Jewish-Roman World of Jesus. Department of Religious Studies at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, 1998. Taylor, Joan E. Christians and the Holy Places, The Myth of Jewish Christian Origins, Oxford University Press, 1993. ISBN 0-19-814785-6. Theed, Karsten Peter. The Dead Sea Scrolls and the Jewish Origins of Christianity. Palgrave Macmillan, 2003. ISBN 1-4039-6143-3.
E. W. Turner, The Pattern of Christian Truth, A Study in the Relations Between Orthodoxy and Heresy in the Early Church, London, Mowbray, 1954. Volantisis, Richard. The Making of the Self, Ancient and Modern Asceticism. James Clark & Co. 2008 ISBN 978-0-227-17281-0-1 White, L. Michael. From Jesus to Christianity. HarperCollins 2004. ISBN 0-06-052655-6. Wright, N. T. The New Testament and the People of God. Fortress Press 1992. ISBN 0-8006-2681-8. Wylan, Stephen M. The Jews in the Time of Jesus, An Introduction. Paulist Press 1995. ISBN 0-8091-3610-4 External links Early Christians Ebionites Early Christian Writings Christian Classics Ethereal Library Early Church Texts The Early Christians in Their Own Words Free ebook, English or Arabic Catholic Encyclopedia, The Fathers of the Church PBS Frontline, The First Christians The Old Testament of the Early Church Revisited, Albert C. Sundberg, Jr. The Jewish-Roman World of Jesus